Now for this last video, we're going to talk about non-probability sampling. So this is a method of sampling where there is no random element involved. So we'll look at a, a few of these. The first one that we're going to talk about is convenience sampling, also sometimes called accidental sampling or haphazard sampling. And as the name suggests, you sample based on what's convenient for you. So let's say we want to study smokers who present to the emergency room. But, you know, we're hiring a student to do it, and the student's got classes and doesn't want to be there at night, so we can only collect data between the hours of 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. So here's our nice student volunteer with her clipboard and her pencil, and these are the only hours she could work, because that's what's convenient for us. Now, the problem is, there might be a reason why the patients are presenting between these hours that we are not picking up. So maybe these are people who have jobs, and the people who don't have jobs come in, 7 a.m. and so now we're actually not just looking at smokers but we're looking at employed smokers and so there could be un unrecognized factors, unrecognized confounding factors with the con convenience samples but we do them because it's convenient for us. Snowball sampling is another kind of uh, non-probability sampling in which one study participant then refers their friend to participate in the study and then this study participant refers another friend, and so on. So the problem here is that these people are all socially connected, so they may share some underlying uh, factor uh, bit, bit, uh, among all of them that would be a confounding variable as well. So these, this is not a good sample either. In purpose, purposive uh, sampling, sometimes also called judgmental sampling, the researcher here, depicted here with a magnifying glass, because he's trying to research something, this person picks who is in the sample, so they try to use their own judgment. So they might say, you know what, we'll pick you, not you, we'll pick you, and we don't want you. And so this is obviously not random, and you can only imagine that it's what the researcher thinks is important, so other confounding variables could easily be introduced. And yet another kind is called voluntary sampling, in which people volunteer to do the survey. Because in this kind of uh, sampling, you have people who've self-selected themselves. And so for, there's usually some reason. It's usually people who are either upset or people who are, you know, have some other reason that they want to be included. So it's not random. They, there is something that's, that is making them volunteer to become part of the sample. So what you'll see that is uh, common among all of these non-probability samples, sampling techniques, is that there is no, there's no randomness involved. Usually it's just people either picking because of the time of day, someone telling their friend to join, or the researcher is picking on their own, or we're letting the, the person pick. And so the samples are not random. And when they're not random, you lose the ability to... Um, yeah, to to get rid of confounding variables and spread them out, because there's some there is something that makes the all these people similar, right? And that it could be what is the thing that confounds your study, the, uh, an alternative factor that could explain the cause that you're looking for. So these are different methods of sampling. But first, we looked at the probability sampling, which is important for random sampling, and then these are the non-probability sampling. And these can lead to bias. You can even have bias in probability samples as well. But if you're going to use one of these non-probability sampling techniques, you're more likely going to get that. Okay, thanks. Bye.